This is Conversations on Careers and Professional Life, a podcast from the Foster School of Business, MBA Career Management Office. I'm your host, Gregory Heller. On each episode, I talk with guests from faculty and staff to students, alumni, and business leaders about the skills and strategies that can help you design a professional career that you're happy with. If you're a regular listener to the show, I've got a favor to ask. Could you take a moment to rate or review Conversations on Careers and Professional Life on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen? Or share an episode with a friend or classmate. It really does help. On this episode, I speak with Class of 2022 Foster MBA grad XJ Kai. XJ is originally from China and started her MBA at Foster in the fall of 2020, while classes and most activities were being conducted remotely due to the pandemic. I was impressed with the way she engaged not only in the Foster community through clubs and recruiting activities, but also participated in case competitions beyond Foster. I wanted to have her on the show to talk about her experiences as an international student, how she handled internship and full-time recruiting, and the experience and skills she gained through those case competitions. I hope you enjoy this conversation on careers and professional life with XJ Kai. XJ, welcome to Conversations on Careers and Professional Life. Hi, Gregory, and uh, hello to all the audience. Great. Thanks for coming on today. So as I said in that introduction, one of the reasons that I really wanted to speak with you is because I know that you did some external case competitions. So we're going to get to talking about that. But before we do, I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about what you were doing before you decided to get your MBA at Foster. Before I joined Foster, I was uh, working in Singapore uh, in a boutique investment bank. So I joined the firm directly after uh, I graduated from college. I had a background in accounting and finance. And uh, for that boutique in, uh, investment bank experience, uh, I was looking at a lot of like, M&A f- advisory. So helping clients in various industries such as F&B, luxury travel, education to look at like, basically their strategic development, helping them to look at acquisition targets, uh, trying to find out what is the right valuation for them to purchase the firm. Sometimes when they need to get the funding to grow the company, they will try to find the, the money for them and source uh, for that funding. And for some of the projects, it's about restructuring. So I spent about five and a half a year there in this uh, like boutique investment bank. And I, I need to say that I have learned a lot uh, from like, the various people that I work with, my co-workers, my partners, as well as uh, my clients. Along the way, I see that there's one part piece of the experience that's uh, missing, uh, is which is the the technology side. So for the past exposure that I have, I've realized that okay, so all the deals that are that I'm doing is actually the traditional type of uh, industries. So I would like to get the exposure to the technology world. So and then another on the other dimension, I would like to like get into corporate strategy or corporate finance, uh, like from the internal point of view, because that like, in the past all the things that I was working on is uh, in terms of the external point of view, and uh, I need I don't really like know like how finance was operated like in, from the internal point of view. So that was uh, my thinking before I applied for my MBA. Then Foster become the, the very natural choice uh, for me because it has so many uh, technology companies here. So yeah, so I think that's how I get to uh, like choose uh, Foster and and do my MBA. All right. I think it's important to note that you came to Foster in the fall of 2020 when things were pretty locked down and a lot of classes, meetings, everything was remote at the beginning there because of the COVID pandemic. But they didn't stop you from jumping in and getting really involved. What were some of the activities that you engaged in when you first started the program that you think helped you progress on the career trajectory that you're on now? I believe that there are a couple of things. I know that we are going to talk about all the case competitions later on, but I believe that what really helps me to uh, like being in that virtual environment yet uh, trying to progress uh, with the with the career change. Uh, I think one of it was uh, like the interactions uh, with the school's uh, career management program. So I know that I spend a lot of time with you, like doing all the mock interviews, uh, trying to get my stories right in order to like 
express to demonstrate my capabilities and my strength. And also, uh, those, um, although I know that, like, for uh, basically, I think I have calculated, I spent about two thirds of my time in Foster being in a virtual environment. However, I believe that the school has that the career management team has arranged a lot of very meaningful activity in terms of like meeting the different companies, those info sections that talks about how the career path in a particular company like, even for some of them is helping us to prepare for, for the uh, job interviews. So I, I would say that I signed up for a lot of those sections during the pandemic while we are in the virtual section. And I think being that in that virtual environment, eliminate that as has, like, hesitation for you to choose uh, which one should I go to because I can just uh, join two consecutively, although like one may have a headquarter in the East Coast, the other may have a headquarter in Seattle. So those very helpful. I think that's uh, one layer of it. Another layer of it, I will say that is those uh, involvement with all the clubs and activities that Foster has. So for my first year, there are two clubs that I spend a lot of time with. Uh, one of it is the Foster Consulting Society. So that's the place where I did a lot of uh, more interview practices with the second years as well as um, my classmates. So through those practices, I think I learned how to articulate my thoughts better and being able to structure my thoughts and deliver some thinking while I, I practice for the interviews uh, for consulting. And the other club that I have uh, involvement in was the Finance Society. So what we have done there is to look at a lot of corporate finance roles across different industries and explore how the different cultures are like, like in different companies. So say that these two are like, like on top of the academic, those are the two places that I spend most time in my first year. So that's the, the consulting society, Foster Consulting Society, which is a really robust club for anyone who's interested in pursuing positions in consulting, but also practicing for case interviews even beyond consulting, but like industry case, you can get a lot of good experience from that preparation. And the Finance Society, which again, runs some fantastic programming to bring uh, alumni and others back to campus or virtual in, in your case yep. during your time in the program to talk about their career experience and what it's like in their companies. So during the fall of your first year, you were doing a lot of that, learning about the different companies, doing a lot of mock interviews. We were working on that too. And then you applied to a variety of companies. Once you had the interviews lined up, what was your approach to preparing for a specific company's interview? Okay. So I guess uh, what I have done is that to different companies, first of all, I think the very important point that you need to know is what the interview structure is like for that particular company. I know that uh, for Amazon, for Google, for consulting companies, uh, the interview structure could be quite different. Some of them may have a very strong focus in terms of the behavioral interview, and some of them uh, will have a very strong focus on, on the casing side. So I would say that point number one, always understand from the, the recruiter or the, the HR person who reach out to you to understand how the process is like. You can get that information from some of the like people in your class or even uh, like from the your second years to get the information as well so I, I like from there I really see the the like collaborative culture of foster I get a lot of information from my classmates as well as the second years on that side so getting uh, understanding on that is important and next I will move on to the second point which is uh, how shall we prepare for that so first of all is to understand the company culture well. So each company has their uh, value, their culture, and you would like to demonstrate that through like all the behavioral interview or the way you structure your, your case answers like by demonstrating that you are a good fit for the company. So looking, some of the company may have a very uh, strong focus in terms of delivering value. Some of them may want you to show that you are a good teammate. So by having uh, like doing the doing your own work, like homework, and do the research in order to make sure that you understand the culture well, and try to uh, show those uh, stories, uh, bring up those behavioral uh, question answers that you have prepared, and try to match your quality towards uh, the culture. I feel that that's uh, something that is important, and such uh, I think it's the so called to to so that you have your culture fit. 
towards uh, that company. So I believe that that's uh, very important too. So in January, you, yep. you sit down, you, you go through the interviews and you get some offers. Uh, yep. How'd you decide and tell us where you interned and what your role was and what yep. factored in your decision on accepting that offer? Okay, sure. So back in January, I believe that for me, I didn't really receive uh, tons of like interview invites. Uh, so I think I received like about four or five. Uh, some of them I advanced to the final round and, and didn't really get into it. So for me, my internship was uh, with, uh, with Amazon. In particular, I was with the operations uh, finance team. Uh, I was trying to I keep it high level. So because I was looking at their middle logic, like basically their, uh, I think it, their is called middle mount logistic assets and try to uh, like try to improve uh, the model that they have in order when, when whenever they do their investments. So the reason for me to make a decision to join Amazon as an intern is that first of all, I know that in a lot of like technology technology company, data is something that is the, the new chain. So basically, I know that for Amazon's internship, that I'll have a lot of opportunity to basically to use data to uh, help me to come up with a recommendation. And that was actually what happened. So I remember that about one third of my time with Amazon, I was spending time writing SQL codes, uh, pulling out the, the data to make sure that when I am going to make the re recommendation in terms of a, a goal or no goal, data is supported with data. So I think that's uh, one of the reasons. And then I believe that uh, the second re uh, reason for me to join Amazon was that Amazon is such a, a huge uh, company. So I would like to know like in terms of finance, how things are operating uh, internally. So I that's another reason. I would need to say that like for Amazon, I... I for my year we don't really have that uh, option to choose like which is the particular function or pillar that you you will get into, so we don't really have a lot of clarity on that. But being uh, the, the nature of big being a big company and being uh, very data driven was the two main reason for me to choose Amazon. But you're not working at Amazon now. You're working at Google. So what was yep. the decision? What factored into your decision making around re-recruiting and uh, ultimately going to Google? Yep. So for me, I feel that I have this desire to get into the real technology world very badly. Like that was the goal uh, when I decided to pursue uh, my MBA. So uh, for Google, I know because... Like for Amazon, it was uh, for the FLDP, the Finance uh, Leadership Development Program, it was a rotational program. So I know that I'm going to spend some time rotating in different areas. So uh, maybe like some of them uh, like in operations, some of them with the cloud business AWS or some with others. And I may be like, ultimately, I know that I'm going, I will glad to end with somewhere that is uh, more technology driven. When I got the offer from Google and talked to the recruiter, basically they told me that I will know, like I I get to choose uh, which function that I got get into, like from day one. So I know that cloud is something that I would like to explore more, like in the future. So uh, given that clarity, that was one of the main reasons that I I decided to uh, go with Google instead of uh, Amazon. Yeah. All right. So is the opportunity to really choose the the position that you would be in and the the sort of line of business that you'd be working on I, yes, yeah, definitely. And I believe that I'm someone who would like to like go really deep into like the like fundamental of uh, things. So I know that three years is not a short period. So I would like to like spend this uh, three years uh, directly after MBA looking at something that I would like to pursue in the long term. All right. So let's take a step back. Uh, I mentioned your involvement in uh, external case competitions where yeah. you had a lot of success. Uh, tell us about those case competitions, when they took place during your program and how you think they might have helped or influenced you in your career search. Yep, no problem. So I think I have joined about five or six case competitions uh, in my first year. 
And I will list a couple to and talk about like how they have influenced my time in Foster. So the first one that I would like to talk about is the AT&T She Counts Finance Competition. Yeah. So it was the first time where they organized, when they organized a, a case competition that is uh, finance driven and they only allow uh, female participants. So what they have done is that they randomly group all the participants uh, into groups of four. And uh, you will get to interact with students that are from other grad schools. So I believe that <clears throat> from that experience, I, I basically, because it's a very finance-driven competition, so I get to like, practice, to practice what I have learned from the like, those core classes that we have in accounting and finance to do the financial model. And also it's how it how things are going to incorporate. So uh, basically for that competition, we were asked to look at some of the uh, strategies for, for AT&T in the mix uh, of the pandemic, as well as how do they face the competition? How do they want to come up with strategy to make sure that they stay competitive? So how do we reflect that strategy that we come up with uh, in the financial model was uh, what I have learned like on the technical side or on the knowledge side. But I think in the meantime, it was also a very good experience for me to like work with uh, like uh, completely new people because of uh, I remember for my team we have students. The other uh, students was my classmate, and the other two was from the another two uh, schools in the in the West Coast. So we learned how to like co- collaborate together because at that time I remember one of the students was still uh, studying in uh, uh, from Asia. So because of that, there's a huge uh, time difference. So I believe that all these practices in terms of how do we collaborate across different time zones, as well as uh, how do we communicate well to assign the workload and all that is uh, a, a good preview for like, working in a global company uh, as uh, what I'm doing right now. So I think that's one of the, the case competition that I remember well. Another case and you, competition... And you, you took first place. <laughs> Uh, you just yes, yeah. In it, so, right? You won the case competition. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes, yeah. And yeah, thanks. Yeah. So the other few that I have take part in, it, I feel that the uh, is also very interesting. So uh, I remember I take part in the small case uh, challenge case competition, and basically that for that case competition, uh, we were matched to a, a very small business uh, in California to uh, help uh, a black owned uh, restaurant to help them improve their revenue and make sure that they survive uh, through the pandemic. Another case competition we have participated in was called Ace the Case competition. So uh, for that competition, we were asked to help a 3D printing manufacturer in Mexico, also to help them to survive, like make sure that they maintain, at least maintain their top line to uh, survive through the pandemic. So for these two business, I think I truly understand like, is what we say, like, uh, like how do you like deal with uh, ambiguity? And also how do you survive through all sorts of uh, hardships? So I remember that we are given this uh, case, we were given the opportunity to talk to business owners, ask them about how the financials of the companies are like, how much cash do they have in terms of like trying to put money into marketing, put some money into future investments. And at that time, is you basically you are you and your teammates are placed into that situation where you have very limited, limited resources, but yet you need to think uh, think of uh, different ways uh, for the business to uh, survive and eventually to get out of the hardship. So uh, I believe that those are the real life uh, struggles that a lot of entrepreneurs and the small and medium uh, business owners are, are facing. And none of it, it we have a, like, a straight textbook answer to that. And I think those are the experience that are unlike the, the case studies that we have uh, during the class where we learn from other people's experience. That's the experience uh, where we really face uh, the real life situation. You don't really have a ton of resources uh, to help you, but you need to come up with quick solutions that uh, involve uh, creativity, but at the same time also be very uh, realistic about what you have on hand in terms of resources. Yeah. So I would say that those experiences are super helpful and give me like a one week or a month uh, worth of experience as an entrepreneur. That's great. And I imagine also a lot of confidence 
after having the experience of presenting in those case competitions, using your skills that you're developing in the classroom, using them for this exercise, that it improved your confidence going into interviews for the internships and full-time jobs. Definitely. Yep. So I think one of the up and coming chains for all these uh, job interviews on uh, like for the MBAs, either being like the consulting cases or being some of the technology company, like for they may come up with a lot of like hypothetical questions to ask you how would you deal with this uh, problem, how will you investigate further. So I believe that those are similar. So I think after some sort of practices and looking through all these like problem sets uh, like during the during all this case competitions, it will form some of, for some sort of like structure for you to like, think through like, how you approach a question. So yeah, those experiences are super valuable. When you look back at your time in the program at Foster, what would you say the most impactful activities or experiences were in terms of finding and securing your internship and your full-time role? I would say that it's like the if I'm going to like for like basically to do a prediction and and look forward by another ten years, I think the uh, memory that I'm going to hold uh, the most strong it will be the those uh, time that I have spent with my classmates. So basically, I I think I have spent a lot of time with my classmates uh, doing all those uh, mock interviews, preparing for different companies. So either being uh, spending time to help other people to prepare or or some other people to help me prepare. Or sometimes we even like schedule a three-hour section spending like 90 minutes on each person to make sure that like we have like solid stories so one of it is to get us to like find the job that we want and uh so basically what we have done is that we listen carefully to each other's story trying to come up with the follow-up question trying to see like which are the details that are missing and trying to help each other to to make sure that the storyline is there but at the same time we uh, convey the message uh, clearly so that's i think that's the primary goal at that time for us to say that Yes, yeah, uh, we would like to help each other to, to secure the internship. But I think uh, the more meaningful point to me is that through this uh, whole process, actually you learn a lot about each other. So one of it is about each other's uh, experiences. So I remember talking to my classmates uh, who are from the con- construction internship. I listened to her stories about like different stories that she has encountered in the construction world. I remember listening to another classmate story in digital marketing so that's something that is totally different exposure that i have in the past so i think i get to learn a lot of things about their past experience uh, the industry that they, they were in but at the same time how all these classmates are dealing with difficult situations uh, dealing with uh, ambiguity so i believe that this is uh, actually a very good learning experience for me to get to know what are out there in the world instead of like knowing only like financial models and, and doing all different forecasts yeah and I think most importantly is the friendship that we have formed uh, throughout this period. So we know who each other is uh, as uh, a working professional, and we know that we are there to help each other to to succeed. Uh, that's some great advice. You know, I think there's a tendency to sometimes align yourself with people who have a similar background and similar goals. But what I hear you saying is that having spent a lot of time with classmates who had very different background experiences and perhaps very different professional goals, you got to have some insight into different aspects of business that were not familiar to you and that you found that to be really rewarding and helpful. Definitely, yeah. And that experience is similar when I, as a first year, like interacting with the second year and also as a second year interacting with the first year. So everyone will have their very unique stories and their approach to questions. So it's just a very nice exposure for, for me to listen to those stories and learn from each other. Would you have any particular advice to international students based on your experience who might be just starting the program or entering their second year on how to approach the career search and preparing for it? Definitely. So 
obviously, all of us uh, know that like we face a lot more restrictions uh, when we are applying for jobs. Uh, like for me, I remember for my first year, I have uh, like received a lot of rejection letters and some of the recruiter actually reached out to me to ask for my background. But after a while, everything stops. And when you follow up, I find out that it's because of the visa status that they, they stopped the process. So I would say that uh, in order to counter that, First of all, try to submit as many applications as possible. So like for me, I think I'm quite a pragmatic person. So what I have done, I feel that this is the statistics game. Uh, so do your research well to understand which are the companies that, that uh, like supports uh, the work visa for international students and uh, put a, a stronger focus on those companies. But in the meanwhile, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to the smaller company, but but because sometimes uh, those companies are also like provide sponsorship. So I think that's number one in terms of application. Number two, I think is uh, to prepare for the interview. So um, I know that some of my classmates are very strong at their English uh, language. But for me, I know that when I first came, uh, I still, although I have been speaking English for the past 20 years, I still feel that I struggle to articulate my thoughts in a uh, very precise way. So times, sometimes I, I think it still happens now that I uh, rumble a, a lot. I try to repeat the same thought uh, like, by saying three different ways. So uh, working with the career management team in order to, to make sure that you say things in a more uh, like concise way and uh, have a very clear message. Sometimes it's also about how you structure your story. So uh, I, I, I still remember vividly that I was asked to give a summary on each of the, the answer that I have. So every time when you are asked a question, I, I will start with, let me tell you a story where X, Y, and Z. So basically to give a one sentence or two sentence summary to talk about what I have done and what I have achieved. So building that, that mus muscle in terms of uh, like how you tell your story is uh, very important. And similarly on the uh, casing side, I know that when you are doing case interviews, we are asked to keep only three minutes to uh, talk about how you are going to structure your approach. So I remember that I kind of like spend five minutes or above every time, I think even like towards the end of the preparation. But I feel that that was fine because I, I, I feel that uh, like the time that I'm going to use in terms of the calculation part is going to be less. So I would say that like having that confidence uh, like in your overall package is very important too. I know that uh, like I, I can like spend le less time in the calculation side so I can afford to spend a little bit more in the structuring side. So I would say that three things. So uh, try to put in more applications, uh, do that research work. Second, to make sure that you tell your story in the manner that is uh, convincing as well as for people to, to un easily understood, basically. And also to have that, that confidence uh, in yourself. I feel that these three are the, the three ideas for international students. Okay, that was some great signposting you did there with your one, two, and three, and a good summary yep. <laughs> to wrap it up. So the old habits die hard, I guess, right? Yep, um, <laughs> yes. So as we uh, come to the end of our time together, I'm wondering if there are any resources that you relied on, whether those might be uh, books or podcasts or newsletters that you regularly use to keep yourself kind of in the loop and fresh for doing that company research and preparing for, for the interviews and, and getting you know, really tapped in. You, earlier, you said that you wanted to go deep on like real technology and cloud. Were there things that you relied on for that outside of the classroom? Yes, yeah, sure. I think there are a couple of things that I would like to, to recommend. And those are the things that I have done as well. So first of all, is especially for those uh, people who know that for their future job, it involves uh, data. I would recommend people to like get on to like those uh, online learnings. Uh, so, so one of the example I could quote and that I have used is Coursera. So I know that a lot of companies, are, especially for finance professionals, uh, a lot of com companies are using SQL. 
as a language uh, to process data and to, to gather insights. So getting on to those online learning uh, sites and uh, take those courses, I feel that those are very valuable experience. It may not give you a lot of practical experience, but once you master those knowledge well, it will give you a good uh, foundation in terms of like what are the different queries uh, look like. So I remember I spent uh, a lot of time like try to complete those uh, courses uh, on Coursera in terms of SQL. At what point during your time in the program did you dive into learning SQL? Uh, I did that before I came. So I remember oh. I used to spend about two hours doing the commute uh, from my uh, home and, and to, to work uh but I think because of pandemic, we were asked to stay at home. So I have that luxury to spend time every day to to look into the like coding side of uh, the experience. Yep. So that's number one. For number two, in order to keep myself up uh, with the with the the chains, the news, uh, like what is happening with different business cultures, I remember I got this recommendation from one of the other interviewee that you have. Well, I listened to your podcast about two and a half years back. So I think the one that I I enjoy the most is After Hours. I believe that it was yeah. host. It is a uh, hosted by three professors who are teaching HBS. So from there, I get to know. It's very casual chat among the three professors and what they talk about are the latest business trends. And you will realize that a lot of their topics revolve around the, the technology companies. And uh, sometimes they talk about the stock mo- movement. Sometimes uh, they talk about the innovation culture. They also explain a uh, about that the impacts of uh, some of the latest uh, strategy that the company has announced and try to like, predict the, the impacts of it and to analyze the risks uh, that are underlying. So I feel that those casual conversation is very easy f- for us to absorb the content. And at the same time, I feel that that's a way for me to like think through my point of view as uh, like the professors communicate their thoughts about it. So I think After Hours is uh, one resource that I will strongly recommend. And I'll put a link to that in the show notes. And I think the other resource that I would recommend, I, and I think sometimes people forget about it, is trying to look for those uh, resources about like more interviews uh, like on for, uh, like forums, for example, YouTube. So especially for those uh, class like students who like to uh, interview for the case interview. So heading to uh, like MBA or heading to grad school, a lot of people, you often hear people say that, uh, I don't know how to do a case. But I feel that like the answer is a little bit uh, of ignorance because actually there are a lot of uh, information out there. So if you uh, Google like uh, mock interviews uh, with, for example, like MBB or with uh, like the consulting firms, you will find a lot of videos that people have done in the past to talk about how a case interview is conducted. There may be different, like, even different versions of it to talk about, okay, this is a, a, a 90%, like, this is a, a, a perfect uh, answer. This is a, a average answer. So uh, watching those videos actually help you to get a sense on, okay, how these case interviews are being uh, conducted and what kind of format you will expect. And at the same time, you will get to know like how people are doing it and come up with basically you are looking at a kind of a mirror to reflect on like where you will have done well and which are the things that you can learn from other people so i think those are the three things that i can think of all right well i think that's a great place to leave it thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me xj my pleasure thank you gregory We heard XJ talk about the collaboration, teamwork, and cross-cultural skills that the case competitions helped her develop during the MBA. She also called attention to some of the additional challenges that international students face when recruiting due to visa sponsorship requirements. Two sites that students can use to identify companies that have sponsored employees for H-1B visas in the past are myvisajobs.com and h1bgreater.com. I'll put links in the show notes. I want to add one clarification to what XJ said about recruiting being a numbers game. 
Yes, it's important to apply to opportunities. And generally speaking, the more applications you submit, the more interviews you're likely to get. But here's the caveat. If those applications aren't focused on an industry or role, or an industry role combination, the networking, informational interviews, and interview prep become harder because every interview requires its own specialized research and preparation. If you're focused on finance roles in a large tech company, or even more specifically, cloud computing companies, the research, networking, and preparation for behavioral interviews will apply to many of the interviews. If instead you're applying to different functional roles in different industries, you'll have more work to do to tailor your story and your behavioral interview answers to these different roles and industries. Enthusiasm and authenticity are critically important in interviews, and that's hard to convey if you're not focused. Thank you for listening to Conversations on Careers and Professional Life. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with a friend or classmate. Help others find the show by leaving a rating or review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. Conversations on Careers and Professional Life is produced by me, Gregory Heller with support from the Foster School of Business, Office of MBA Career Management. Learn more about the show, find show notes and past episodes, and get in touch with me at conversationsoncareers.com.